everybody. So this is going to be a tutorial about how to shellac your toes for a pedicure. Um, you always want to start out by filing and shaping your toes. Um, this just allows the shellac to adhere completely to your toenails um, or any nail for that matter. Um, my Again, this my tripod is uh, lost at the moment, so I am doing this with one hand. So if I seem a little shaky, that is the reason why. Next, you want to go ahead and push back your cuticles to remove them. Um, you don't want to have any skin or cuticle on the nail bed where you are going to be placing the shellac because that does um, decrease the wear of the varnish on your your toenails. So in this I am pushing them back gently to be removed um, in the next step. Be very gentle when you do this. There's no need to really push hard. Um, you just want to lift the skin that's um, attached to your nail bed. Next I'm taking my cuticle remover and I'm going to gently remove just the skin that was um, peeled back or you know pushed back by my cuticle pusher. Do this to all of your toes. The great thing about shellacking for a pedicure is that it lasts a really, really long time. Uh, especially if you do it properly, it will last upwards a month without coming off. You want to make sure um, that you clean the nail bed completely. I use Scrub Fresh fr from C&D. You can also use rubbing alcohol or acetone to clean the nail surface. This is going to really extend the life of your shellac because you're putting your, the shellac onto a clean surface with no impurities. So next you're going to take your base coat and you're going to apply a very very thin coat of the base coat onto your nail bed. Make sure that you're going from corner to corner without touching the skin and without touching um, the remaining cuticle you have left on. If you don't want to remove your cuticle I guess that would be fine but make sure that the shellac does not touch any of the cuticle that's on your toes uh, just because it will lift. As you can see, I have a bit on my skin, which is not a problem. Just take an orange stick and um, wipe it off. This will remove all of the gel from your skin. You do not want to go into the UV light with gel on your skin. Do this and repeat this for each of your toes. Next, you're going to want to put in your foot to your um, your UV machine, and I have the C and D machine as well. Um, put it on for 10 seconds and make sure that it's cured properly. After the base coat, you're going to put on your first coat of color. I'm I've chosen Tropics. If it can focus, there we go. I've chosen Tropics. It's a coral color, very very pretty. And I'm going to apply, again, a very, very thin coating of the um, nail color all over the nail. Um, make sure that if you don't go all the way to the sides with the, your base coat, that you also don't go all the way to the sides with 
when you start doing your polish. You want to go over only the areas that you put the base coat so that way it will stick. Make sure it's a nice thin coat. It's even all the way across the nail surface. You don't want it to be thick. If, it, if you put it on too thick, it will bubble and kind of wrinkle when it goes into the UV light. So make sure that it's nice and thin. Again, if you get some on your skin, no worries. Just wipe it off with the orange stick. I am a very messy nail polisher, <laughs> if that's even a word. Um, that's why I really don't like using regular polish because it's very difficult to do this step with an orange stick and not smear all over your skin. So um, I really love the gel just because of you really can't mess it up. You know, once you put it on, if you get it on your skin, you can you can correct it without it being a big deal at all. Again, apply thin coats to all of your nails and don't forget to cap the edges um, by swiping the brush across the top of your nail. This will seal the whole thing in. Once you've finished painting all of your toes, go back through with your orange stick and clean up any remaining residue that you have around your skin and around your cuticle area. Uh, if you have excess polish around the cuticle area, it will also make it wrinkle. So make sure that you are cleaning all of that up as best as you can to extend the life of your shellac. All right, it's time to put our foot back in. We're going to set it for 120 seconds and let it cure under the UV lamp. Second coat, here we come. Make sure that this coat is just as thin as the first one and that you're only applying polish to the areas that receive shellac in your past two coats. Making sure that it's nice and thin is also going to help it last longer. The thinner the coats, the longer I feel that it's going to last. At least on me, if I apply thin coats of shellac on my toenails, they will last more than a month before I need to change them. The reason why I usually change them after a month is not because that they're peeling or anything. It's because um, you can see the growth. So making sure that you're capping those edges is really, really important. That seals in the shellac. And if you get some on your skin while you're capping the edges, that's just fine. Go ahead and swipe it off with your orange stick. Go ahead and repeat this process with all of your other toes. Okay, it's time to cure the second coat of color polish for 120 more seconds. I've decided that I'm going to do a little nail art with shellac. If you use shellac colors for your nail art, I, it seems to last a little bit longer than if you'd use regular nail polish to do your nail art. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few dabs of the colors that I want onto a clean surface. I'm using the back of the envelope that I was going to throw away. I'm using Cream Puff and Black Pool. And you don't have to worry about these drying out because it's gel. It's not going to cure unless it's under the UV light. So being exposed to the air is not going to affect it. Next, I'm going to take the um, the white polish, the cream puff, and I'm going to slowly dab it into a heart shape. My goal is to make a double heart, so I'm going to start with the white and put it into the shape that I want it. If you also have um, nail art brushes, you can use those too. I'm just being really lazy and I didn't want to get up, so I'm using my orange stick that I was using to clean off the polish off my skin. It works just as well. Next, I'm going to dip it into the black pool, and I'm going to make my second heart. I want the black heart to kind of overlap the white heart. So I'm going to try to remove a little bit of the white heart so that way the colors don't mix. The good thing about shellac is that you can just swipe it off without it affecting the polish underneath. Because the polish underneath is already cured, you don't have any um, streaking or gouging of the polish that you've already cured. So that makes nail art very, very easy to do with shellac. So again, I'm just doing a rough outline of the hearts, and then I'm going to fill them in when I'm done with the outline. I'm doing this with one hand, so it's going to be a little bit rough. So, you know, if you're doing it by yourself and you have both hands, it's probably going to look better. I'll put a picture in at the end of what my other foot looks like where I used both hands, and it does look much better than this one does. So... Um, two hands definitely counts where it comes to nail art. Okay, that looks to be about done. That's my finished design. It's a little blurry. Um, sorry about that. But we're going to cure this again for 120 seconds. If your nail polish for your nail art is a bit thick, go ahead and increase it by, I don't know, like 180 seconds. After you come out of the cure from curing your um, your nail art, you're going to want to apply the shellac top coat. Again, very thin coat, making sure to cover the entire surface and capping that edge. After you've cleaned up all of the shellac top coat from your skin, you're going to put your foot back in the UV lamp and go for 120 more seconds. The last step is to remove the tacky layer that comes with the gel polish from curing with um, isopropyl alcohol. The, uh, the highest I could find was 91% and that does just fine for my needs. Um, I think you're supposed to have 97 or 99% isopropyl alcohol to remove it, but 91 does just fine. Okay, so that's it. This is the finished product. I'm going to leak some pictures at the end of both toes. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.